Welcome to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. In this first episode of a multi part series, I welcome Michael Kim, a data and analytics expert. Listen in as Michael shares his thoughts on how to address complex IT landscapes for a successful implementation. Hello, everyone. Joining me today is Michael Kim, a good friend and a seasoned leader in the field of data and analytics with a focus on SAP technology. Welcome, Michael. Hey, Musansir. Very nice to be here. And it's a pleasure. And it's always uh, great to have a conversation and dialogue with my good friend. And what better topic than talking about data analytics, especially, you know, given time right now where things are going. It's exciting times for the market and the industry. And it's uh, happy to be here. And thanks for having me. All right. Now, great to have you, Michael. I think that this is one of the uh, a hot topic as, as you go along across the board, you know, any organization, everybody is talking about challenges of implementing data and analytics in their environment, especially when you have a complex landscape. So with that, uh, I'd like to get into the our discussion points. So are you ready? Yes, absolutely. Let's get it going. All right. So let's start with a high level, right? So I wanted to get your take on how do you approach data analytics in a complex landscape? Like what should be, like, what are the things that you have seen based on your experience? Can you explain? Can you share some thoughts on that? Absolutely. And this is the big elephant in the room for all organization, right? Is uh, what is complex and especially data analytics alone topic itself is complex so how do we tackle it and it's been a com- you know it's been a conversation it's been a question it's been challenges for all organizations globally for you know for however i long i've been doing this for a very long time and it doesn't change i think way i see it and what i experienced for the past 20 years serving multiple clients and multiple vendors and you know both from sap and outside of sap and it and business i think it comes down to two things is what is a complex landscape and how do we approach it and really nails down to two is process approach or is it a data-driven approach and there's no right or wrong answer for that matter. It's really uh, what sets the foundation of uh, solving the complexity to provide business clarity on, you know, process and what role does data and analytic products and tool set comes into that picture as well. So I've seen organizations who prefer to have a data analytic landscape where they want to have it more centralized meaning Mm -hmm. they don't want to have a decentralized from multiple, uh, they want to consolidate from multiple regions to one centralized data platforms, which will produce data products to the business and to the customers and to the vendors. And then I've seen organizations where they prefer decentralization of the data environment. And of course, I am not going to, I'm not going to say there's no right or wrong approach on this. I think it all comes down to the customer's desire and where they fit in the industry. And at the end of the day, it's understanding the environment of the landscape. And that's how you tackle it, is a centralized a centralized approach of the data environment. And the, how do you solve that complex landscape? And then what is the data product and data pr- and process comes into place as to a data centralized data environment where you want to provide, you know, clarity and data insights in that decentralized. But where does that? How does that serve in purpose to the customers and the users in the business to drive uh, pro- provide data products around that area? Got it. Now that makes sense. And I think that and that, that's kind of a good lead into my next question. When you talk about implementation approach, right? What criteria do you imply? And basically, what is the application to simplify the implementation approach? Is a better question, I guess. So, so I always go with and with this approach is, I think it's yeah, taking a step back from applications or business, but we're all you know how we come into this world, you know, from you know when we're infants to when we become you know to an adult and to as we age into more mature you know grown ups, is there's three stage is a crawl, walk, and run approach. And of course, that's the, I think that's the most important thing for the organization to really realize where they are in the current state is, are they in the infant stage or are they, are they 
or are they in they are in the infant stage where they want to make that transition into walking and to running and then ultimately sprinting and that if i have to put that into an analytic perspective is uh you know, I think this is the most common term that's thrown out there is, uh, do you, uh, where are you in the organization in your data products and analytic maturity? Is that really driven by descriptive analytics or is it more predictive or is it more prescriptive? And then, of course, and then it gets more complex with uh, new and better things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, which makes analytics going from prescriptive to a lot more advanced to, you know, do a lot more wonderful things on how to um, use the product. So, yeah, I mean, I think you, you hit it right on, right? And think, and that's one of the things that a lot of organizations do have to analyze where they are in the journey. And and I think, and that's, that's, that can be challenging, right? Depending, depending on the maturity of the, the data analytics, um, uh, approach that they, the organization is using, right? And and to your point, when you talk about like these three phases, the descriptive, prescriptive, and, and, and uh, predictive, right? Um, it is a balance of what you currently have and where you want to end up, right? Uh, that's that's the key, what what I'm hearing from you. Absolutely, Mostasir. I mean, you, you, and I work with a lot of colleagues going back to met many, uh, we served a lot of customers in the past. And I think it's the same story, even for you, right? You've been into a lot of big, high profile, large cap companies, large different, I guess, corporations, different business, global wide and SIs. And when you walk in, first thing I believe you always look for is even for yourself is where are we? What am I walking into? And then where are we? Where, where are we as a project program, also as a client? And minute you I think harness that realization we're in the program. And then you also define what you need to do and what, how you can add value to simplify that implementation approach. So it's a, it's the same thing for every consultant, every data analytic professional is really understanding your surroundings, your, your current state, not only for yourself, for the program and the client, and also where, where does the SI role pick, come into picture? Where does a this application or software vendor come into the picture? It's really understanding the current state. And the word that where you want to get to, which is a future state. Yeah, for sure. So I think that 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 using that as a as a driver into our next conversation is based on your experience working with system integrators, as you mentioned, customers, SAP itself. What constitutes a successful data analytics project? That's really interesting question, and I guess it's coming from. IT, then if, I, I guess that's all depends on who you're serving as a okay. uh, data analytics professional or as an industry-wide consultant or expert. But it, it really comes down to, in my opinion, is who are we here to serve? Is it IT or is it business or is it organization? What makes the company click? And in my, my personal philosophy is it's always prioritize business first, mainly because... Uh, going back to the whole fundamental three pillars is people, process, and technology is when you start a business, even for a small startup, it's, you know, it's selling a small, you know, like a hamburgers for mom and pop stores to turning that into a multi-billion dollar global hamburger chain. It's all about selling the product and serving the public, right? So it, uh, I mean, who's going to get, who's going to help you? get there it's the people it's the people you hire and who people who has a share, uh, share the same vision and then after that after those people are defined to uh, collaborate in that vision what is a set of process that we need to put in place for not only for the company but also within the division within the people and the culture and then once you set that good process and strategy then that's when the technology comes in and you know make sure that we execute so i think with that said what i'm looking for as a constitutes a successful is the business objective is met uh and, and if that business constitutes the c-level executives or is, is it constitutes a middle management or also even for the customers and vendor is can they make uh, data analytics all about providing insight insights and and providing data and providing intelligence so they can make informed decisions and to me, that's the prioritization that constitutes successful is that can business, are business able to make 
better decision for the company to uh, that they were able to do it in the past than as to today and also for the future. And also, there's no right or wrong answer. It also depends on uh, uh, where you are in the program. And end of the day, it's always going back to the core fundamental is making the business and organization successful. Yeah, I think I, I, I like the way you kind of summed it all up. And it seems like it does. You first, you need to know your end customer, especially when you're dealing with analytics. And at the end of the day, the business needs to benefit. And if the business is benefiting, then that will allow an organization uh, to grow, right? which is the whole idea behind analytics is to help businesses, organizations as a whole to make sure that they are on the right path. You know, they are making progress. And your approach makes a lot of sense, especially when you talk about success factors, like what are the things that makes an organization click? So thank you for clarifying that. I think this is really important. And then when we're talking on this topic, let's let's look at from a, a different angle. You know, why is it important to have all these projects? We, we look at different projects and why is it so important to have a good senior analytics architect who can see things, you know, from a holistic per- perspective on these projects. Why, why, why is it that so critical? Well, I can share my personal experience working with you when you joined the program, one of our clients, right? Is yep. day one when you joined the program, Mustansir comes in and says, hey, Michael, Mustansir, very nice to meet you. And we click. And then the first question you ask is, what am I walking into? And who are my customers? And you wanted to get the whole pictures all together. And my question is like, okay, there's a lot of good questions you're asking. And one of the things you said is like, uh, one of the you saying is that everything is connected, Michael. And, and as a senior architect, I not only have to see it from technical perspective, but you have to see it from business perspective and you have to see it from process perspective. And that's what the senior arch- analytic architects brings to the successful program is, is having that right combination of technology and business and also process in place to really see the holistic picture where the whole fundamental principles of that you adhere that you always preach to me and also we preach to our team is analytic and data are all connected within the organization we just need to help the business and the technology it and the customers be able to see the holistic picture how everything is connected so it's not just the analytic architect who's specializing on tools you know like sap or oracle or not just the business uh, architect who comes from consulting company like mckenzie just focusing on such much business process but being able to connect both process business technology all into one and then package that into one holistic picture and drive that whole success of the program i think that's what sets uh the importance of senior architect and what i'm trying to i think the lack of the better a better word is the total package who sees everything and who are able to connect everything and then able to strive to that success. So that's the, you know, that was the impressive the experience we always adhere to and we always preach it to our, uh, our colleagues. And so far it worked out well, right? Yeah, for sure. And I think, and, and that's the key, right? That holistic view, like you explained it, especially, you know, when you are trying to do a robust data environment, you know, how, how do you define your goals, right? You know, what, what is short-term versus long-term and like a strategy approach, right? Versus a more operational approach. So it seems like having that person, you know, that view of the, of, of the whole landscape really allows you to kind of get into the details. And the only way you can do it is having that, that experience in the past, right? Having been there, experienced it, seen it, and now you're applying all those learnings into this project, right? So I think that that that's what I'm hearing from you. Absolutely. And one of my, and I'm going to quote you on this. There was a moment uh, in the program in our, you know, when we're working together, you said, hey, I'm here for two things. I'm here to either add value. I'm here to fix a problem. I'm here to do both. And I think if that mindset comes in, and that's a uh, that's a mindset and principle that principle that senior architect holds, I think it's a you know that program is due for a good success. And I'm sorry to steal your quote on this, but that was the very impressive that the principles that I still go by is I'm always learning from my colleagues like yourself and. I think that's the core founding principles is to, as a senior art, an analytic architect, is to not only add value, but also fix problems, but at the same time, do both, not only for short term, but long term as well. 
For sure, and and thank you for the kind words. Uh, and I think that that kind of takes us to uh, to the towards the end of our conversation. Um, I'd like to always ask this question from our guests. So, you know, based on what we covered so far, what is the one key takeaway that you would want to leave with the listeners today? Analytics, data, this technology is there's no right or wrong answer. It's changing every day. And one thing that has I think we're in 2023, year 2023, but the year 2022 pandemic has taught us, if anything, is that we still don't know. Even with, we, we're we never well prepared. It's always evolving. And there was one way to counter that is always preparing ourselves to technology-wise, people-wise, and process-wise. But in order to get there is understanding your organization, under, either organization as an executive or organization as a middle management or organization as a customer and vendor we work with. It's understanding your current state and where you are. And then from there, using that uh, self-realization to really drive the strategy, the short-term strategy and the long-term roadmap to really have a good, clear picture of where you want to get from point A to B to X, Y, Z. I think that is the key takeaway for, I want to share with the listeners today is that I think analytic and data technology, where we're, what we're doing in this industry is always going to be a journey. And we just need to know that where we are in the journey and where we want to, how we want to get there. I think that is the critical component of our success, not only to ourselves, but to our uh, customers and vendors and our partners. I think you said it very well. And and what I, my two takeaways from this is change is the only constant in this industry, as well as self-realization, right? Self-realization is the key for an organization to move forward on where you want to end up as a data and analytics landscape, right? And and then, of course, the, the, the long-term strategy that becomes part of the uh, the goals that you want to put together. So, this was a great conversation, Michael. Looking forward to having you know more sessions with you where we do some more in-depth conversations on this topic. I'd like to get some real-life examples from you. So thank you very much for joining the session with us today. Oh, thank you, Mustansir. It's been you know, it's been a good first session, and thanks for having me. And to our listeners, definitely, it's exciting times for the field of data analytics, and it, this is an incredible journey we're going to embark on. I'm looking forward to more conversation and more dialogues and experience we're going to discuss going forward. Thanks for listening to Tech Driven Business, brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. Michael shared valuable insights on what it takes to handle complex landscapes. His main takeaway? There is no right answer when working with analytics, data, and technology. It is constantly evolving, and it's a journey. We would love to hear from you. Continue the conversations by connecting with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Learn more about Innovative Solution Partners and schedule a free consultation by visiting isolutionpartners.com. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Information is in the show notes.